it is such Yes, Father Nikama Metoka Kidogo. I'm sure it's great to be back again. The servant of God, Amanda Kidogo, but I'm very sure he's, he's back. Let's be patient a little bit. Comes before a great, um, a great fall. And so the very important sign that we should look at before we fall is if we are getting proud, if we feel like we are the best of all the people around us. And that's how pride comes into our lives. In James chapter 4, verse 10, we read, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. In order for God to lift us up, in order for God to walk with us, in order for God to realize blessings in our lives, we really need to humble ourselves. There was a great lady in this world called Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and she always said that when we are humble, nothing will touch us, not insults, not praise. We shall just be at one level, she used to say, it is very important for Christians to be very low, just as low as an envelope. That does not mean that we do not know what we are doing, but that we have realized that in us is Christ who dominates our lives and who does everything that is good in us. Our calling to serve Jesus is not by our own making. It is by the making of Christ. And so pride by itself, the character of pride is very disgusting. Among the very disgusting things that we have ever come across, one of them is pride. When somebody is proud, he or she may not know. Most of the times, actually, they do not know. Only those around this person know that he is proud or she is proud. Pride is like a bad smell that I've said sometimes back. It is like when I smell and I don't know because I'm used to my own smell, but I'm smelling and the people around me cannot, cannot uh, withstand the smell. And so I just feel it. I'm okay with it. I'm proud and I cannot, uh, do anything about it, but those around me can see and can smell the bad smell. That's how pride is. And so when I smell, when I stink badly, people tend to go away from me. That's how pride is. Because when we are proud, we want to talk about ourselves. I want to talk about myself. I want to talk about everything about myself. I want to talk about everything that you've ever heard about me. I want to talk everything that, you know, everyone who is around me, it is all about me. And I wish that you could all worship me. That is what pride is. No one wants to be around a proud person, but those who are humble are attractive. They are like a sweet fragrance that attracts people, that brings people together. They are like, uh, like, 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 like a very comfortable, uh, 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 you know, place for people to be. They are friendly, they are homey, they are kind, and so they attract people. Good people, humble people attract others. Let us now look at some of the characteristics that the proud people have and the humble people have, or a contrast between the two. 
Just before I go there, I want to give you a few verses that would be very important for you at your own time of reading so that um, you can also follow up what the scriptures say about, um, about pride. Galatians 6, 4, um, Isaiah 2, 12, James 4, 6, you can look at also Proverbs 16, 5, among many others that we shall encounter. I'm now looking at the characteristics or the comparison between a proud person and a humble person. Number one, the humble people are grateful. Gratefulness. As Christians and as believers, we must be grateful. We are grateful to God in all moments, in times of turbulences, in times of difficulties, and in times of joy and even in times of sorrows, we are, hum we are grateful. The humble appreciate God. And not only God, the humble appreciate God and their brothers and sisters. Because there's no way we can say we appreciate God or we are grateful to God and yet we are not grateful to one another. The proud, however, are ungrateful. They do not and never have enough. They are always asking for more. They never have time to say, thank you, Lord, for the little that I've got. They have a plan. They have a desire. They always say, until I get to this mountain of things, that's when I'll be able to be grateful to God. Yet that kind of a desire, that kind of a hunger never comes to an end. It is very important for us as Christians to be grateful in small things and in big things. When we become ungrateful, then that is a red flag. In all situations. Characteristic number two, the humble are simple, simplicity. Christians are supposed to be simple people. Live simply and let, uh, let others simply leave. They are down to us. They, but the proud want to be very complicated. Sometimes we get so complicated on Sundays when we want to go to church because we want to be a point of reference. Our complication sometimes denies others you know, the opportunity to listen to the word of God keenly. Simplicity is not poverty. Simplicity is not being indecent. Simple and decent. Simplicity is not about not being expensive. It is just being simple. It is just being having what you need. It is having the little that you have, but well-placed. Good, decent dressing that is lovely, not necessarily very flashy, not necessarily this person who makes everybody stop in the church so that they can look at them. Simplicity of a humble heart. The proud draw attention. The proud are complicated. The proud start arguments that never end. The proud never have enough. And so it is very important for a humble person to be simple. All Christians are called to, to be simple. And remember that this simplicity starts from our heart. What is that simplicity from our heart? It is believing that I belong to God entirely. What I have is for me to use here on earth, with myself, with my family, and those around me, just as much as I can enjoy it today, because tomorrow is not mine. Characteristic number three, the humble are appreciative. Those who are humble will always appreciate. Those who are proud 
will never appreciate. For those who are proud, they always want more and more and more. The proud want to progress and to rise into places working on the top and on the heads of the others. Unfortunately, it can also happen in our churches. Struggle for power, struggle for positions, wanting to be in all groups of the church. The very best model in the scriptures of this appreciative and simplicity is John the Baptist. And we can read this in John chapter three, verse 30 to 35. And he says, he must increase, but I must decrease. A Christian has to learn how to decrease, to go down and let others go up. A mother of a family knows how to prepare a family to appear well in church. And she may be the last to, to dress and to take breakfast. After the entire family is presented and well, uh, you know, vested to go to church. And so the point here is he must increase, I must decrease. And at the same time in my praise and worship, in my prayer, I must lift up God. It is about lifting up God in praise, not self-searching. It is very important for us to know that sometimes we go to church to self-search ourselves, to feel good, to make others look at us, to show others how we have been blessed and maybe they have not been blessed. But it's not all about that. Am I speaking to somebody this evening and am I saying, are we able to lift up our pastors? Are we able to lift up our priests? Are we able to lift up our shepherd so that they may communicate the word of God with peace and comfortable situations? If we seek for ourselves, we shall always complain. It is a very good characteristic of a proud person to always complain about the pastor to always complain about the pastor's wife, to always complain about the priest. A Christian who is simple and appreciative, even when they see something wrong, they pray for the men of God. In our church, the Pope recently said that the shepherd should smell like the sheep. The pastor has to humble himself and reach to the level of the Christian so that he may also lift them up in prayer and service. When we distance from our sheep, if I may use that word, we become unworthy shepherds. And so every pastor, every priest, every pastorist should smell like the sheep. Number four, the humble must trust in God. The humble trust in God. The proud trust in themselves. We read in the scripture that some trust in horses, others trust in riches, others trust in uh, godfathers, others trust in so many things. But those who trust in God will renew their strength. If we want to renew our strength and make sense in the church today, we must be able to be humble enough and trust in God. Trusting in God is at all moments. Sometimes in the church, we forget that there's something called divine providence. The divine providence that God always provides for his people. He never sleeps, neither does he slumber because he has to provide. That is called divine providence the providence that comes from God. Many men of God, all men of God, depend on the divine providence. All believers in every situation trust and believe in the divine providence of God. Once we lose that, like virginity, we cannot bring it back. 
we lose it completely. We can only seek for God's encounter, a new experience with God, a new salvation in order to gain this trust in God. No matter how many times we go to church, no matter how many times we go to praise and worship, if we have not had an experience with God, if we have not have had an encounter with Christ, and so be saved, it is just a makeup. When do we really want, at a, at a personal level, to test our faith? When we want to test our faith at a personal level, we need to know whether we will still call upon the name of the Lord in times of turbulences. If we still call upon the Lord, then yes, we have had an encounter with this God. The proud do not trust in God. They say, I will. It was my power. It was my money. It was my car. I feed the church. I feed the pastor. I feed the priest. It is me. And they hit their chest. That's right. And it is a characteristic before we fall big time. The scriptures in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 tells us that those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength. Will find their strength renewed. And so trusting in God is such an important Father, we are not hearing. Yes, Father has um, connectivity problem, but uh, I'm very sure he's coming back. He's uh, at point four, whereby he's saying that we, the proud never trust in the Lord, they trust in themselves. The man of God is saying that the humble must trust in the Lord. And he has given us that powerful verse from Isaiah 40, verse that one, which speaks about those who trust upon the Lord. So thank you for those who are still in. We are speaking about being humble and the consequences of the proud, how they fall greatly. The humble are grateful. Yes, they appreciate God and the brethren, brothers and sisters, they appreciate every person. Proud are never, never. The second point you have said that the humble are very simple. Yeah, they are never complicated. You say simple, a decent. Aku akanena mambo, akasema the proud uh, after to draw attention, the sibo normally don't want to draw attention. That point, the humble are highly appreciative. They appreciate. They are not struggling for power. It has given us a verse from John 3, 30 to that fight. He has given us a warning that the proud are always complaining about leadership, always complaining about everything. Man of God is telling us that we should be humble to avoid the complaints. Then the fourth point, it was this point that humble 
trust in the Lord. The proud trust in themselves. So I believe that um, he is joining. I don't know why the connectivity is as an issues from his, his end. But uh, we can wait a little bit. I'm very sure he's joining as we meditate upon the points. The ambo are grateful, the ambo are symbol, the ambo appreciative, the ambo trust upon the Lord. Hallelujah. A powerful piece of the word. Well, let's wait, let's wait. From number five, uh, in case somebody has just come on board, I was looking at some of the characteristics in comparison between proud pride and humility, those who are proud and those who are humble. And I was on characteristic number five, that the, um, the humble live according to the will of God. And I just said before the lights went off that the will of God is the main thing in our lives as believers. If we do not live according to the will of God, we are living according to our own way of doing things. And this own way of doing our own things may not be a blessing into our Christian life. And so it is very important every time and again for us to listen deep down in our hearts and find out if we are living according to the word of God. And how do we know whether we are living according to the word of God? I mean, to the will of God. Number one, the scriptures. If we are not deeply rooted into the scriptures, then we can just be making statements all over and believing in them and living in them but we may be living without roots. And so we need also to understand that the will of God will come through our friends, our fellow Christians, our church elders, the will of God in my life. At the same time, the word of God teaches us clarity and a spirituality of maturity that enables us to choose between shaky shaky statements and the word of God because it is not strange nowadays to find that in our churches sometimes we have a few statements that may not be rooted in the scriptures and a few statements that may not be constructive for mature Christians listening and understanding the will of God and it is very uh, evident that sometimes the will of God is not the easiest way to go one of the questions about understanding the will of God is asking, what do you want me to do for you, Lord? Where do you want me to be? Because I may be here and tomorrow God may want me in another place. And accepting that will of God, sometimes in tears, but in humble adoration of accepting the will of God. We read in Psalms 25, from verse four to five, I just read shortly. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my savior. And so our God teaches us his ways and his paths. If we do not listen to the, word, to the will of God, then as I call it in my own language, we can be playing a one-man guitar. I'm just a one-man guitar. I'm saying I'm a Christian. I'm going my own way. I'm doing my own things. I'm not in union with my church. I'm not in union with my pastor. I am just playing my own guitar. I'm off tune. I'm just doing my own things. I'm coming to church when I want. I'm coming to church and doing things and going. I'm coming to church and sometimes, sometimes interrupting. Remember that the spirit that God gives us is also a spirit of order. It is a spirit of obedience. It is a spirit of, of, of purification. So 
uh, no matter how much we may say that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, which is a very good thing, we are not supposed to play our own guitar. We are supposed to enter into the journey of faith of the entire church, which is led by a pastor or uh, a lady pastor who works with us. Characteristic, remember, sorry, before I go to characteristic number six, the not the other side. This one man guitar who plays his own is the proud one. He may say he, he has all the revelations. He may say that he has visited God by himself. He may say that God visits him every evening. But as I tell you, you have to come down and be in the same line with the will of God in our church. Characteristic number six is patience. Of an humble Christian is a very patient Christian. To be patient is to wait upon the Lord. If we are proud, we are not patient. We do not want to wait upon the Lord. Sometimes we feel if we are proud that this God is taking too long. We want to take shortcuts. Sometimes we feel that we need to help this God. I'm thinking maybe a couple that is waiting upon the Lord for a baby, someone who is waiting upon the Lord for a job, someone who is waiting upon the Lord for, for, for a fiance and later for a wife, a husband, somebody who is waiting upon the Lord to build his own house, somebody who is waiting upon the Lord for anything that we may think of. Sometimes we give up at the last minute. When the fruit is just ripe, we say, let me go. And then it falls down. In a certain church that was doing so well, the pastors were so anointed. The pastors were so blessed. And they came together into a meeting. And they had realized a young man in the congregation that was so talented. And they wanted to put him in a good position in their choir, because they had seen the qualities of a young man of God who would really motivate so many people. However, this young man had really waited for this moment. And he didn't know that the pastors were also thinking about this moment and particularly thinking about him. And when the pastors went to a meeting and they came to a consensus that they should ask him, <laughs> to take over the choir and everything about praise and worship. But the day that they were to really sit him down and give him instructions of the same, they could not find him. His phone was off and nobody seemed to know where he had gone to. He was so mad with the church that he deleted the number of the pastor and the number of the main people in the church because he had waited to be that person in the church. So when the pastors came to give the news, there was nobody. He had gone. Sometimes we are never patient. And when God comes with his blessings, he doesn't find us. He finds us in other things. He may find me in a witch doctor's place. He may find me in other things trying to make shortcuts. He may find myself trying to commit suicide because I could not wait for that, just that one day, just that one afternoon, just that one moment, waiting upon the Lord with tears, with prayer, with hope, with prayer and fasting, waiting upon the Lord. The proud are so proud to wait. They look for shortcuts. They look on ways of buying miracles. They cannot wait. The word of God in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, tells us, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulations, be constant in prayer. Be patient in tribulations, be constant in prayer. This comes to tell me that when I'm going through turbulences of the world, I should assure God I'm not going anywhere. Check the world and find me here. One day, 
I was unwell for a long time. And I'm a very fast person. Sometimes I get very impatient. And one afternoon as I was praying, <laughs> I told God, God, it has been too long. I've been waiting for a long time for this healing. But as I can see, I think you're not in a hurry. On the other side, me as a man of God, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> then after that, I was just laughing at myself. Then I told him, if you just want to continue shaming you, dear Lord, continue making me sick. <laughs> and somehow, that is how the healing started. Characteristic number seven. The humble are out to please God. The proud want to please people. We do everything for the glory of God. When I became a man of God one day, another very wise man of God told me, you became a man of God to die. And my heart jumped. Mm -hmm. I said, really, am I gonna die? He said, yes. If you want to give yourself totally to God, you have to die slowly. You give yourself. And he told me that there is a very big bird called a pelican bird. And when there is hunger, this bird plucks itself and gives its flesh to its children. And then it bleeds to death. And that's the image of a man of God. We come to serve God, to tear ourselves in pieces, to bring healing to the church, to bring healing to the body of Christ. If we are afraid of that, then we have not tested Christ. We have not loved Christ. As Mother Teresa will say, love until it hurts. The proud will say, excuse me, this is too much. The proud will say, Mimi kanisa ni jumapili tu, na kikachache, yu ingine, kila mtu ajipange. They say, I'll just, if the church is not benefiting me, I will close it. If the church is not good to me, I don't care. The proud will scatter the gathering of God. The man of God and the woman of God suffer to build the body of Christ. Sometimes we preach and nobody cares. We sacrifice our time and nobody wants to know. We walk and walk and walk and become hungry. Shauriao. Sometimes we do great things and no word of thanks. Sometimes we spend time with people. Sometimes I gave you a small story of how a man of God went to the hospital to see some of these Christians who were admitted in the hospital. He had three. And one afternoon went after, he, after the service on a Sunday, he said, let me go and see my Christians in the hospital. And when he reached in the first room, he found the Christian, the, the man of the, the, the Christian that he had gone to visit deep into sleep. The wife was seated by the side. And, and as the pastor tried to talk to this man, the, the wife said, Shh. So Pastor Kanyamaza, Nakaenda. As he walked to the next room, he said, Oi, atatajuaji nilikuja. I did not even see him. He did not see me. I did not talk to him. Akaenda. In the next room, he found the bed empty. Akauliza, hapa diyo kuna mkristu wangu? Akambiwa, eh, lakini ameenda fizio. Nasa ntamuona aji, ungojia masama wili, fizio inateke masama wili. But he could not, because he had to do other things. Pia hapo akaondoka bure. Yatatu, 
akaenda akapata room imejaa wageni na mgonjwa wako huko ndani amenyamaza anajaribu hey niko hapa pasta niko hapa father nataka kuona mgonjwa kambe ni sawa ni sawa akasema i wish i had a better contact with my christian ni msalimie mkono ajue mimi imekuja mimi kama pasta it didn't happen akatoka kwa hospitali akaenda kama ameinamisha kichwa aka akijiambia now what kind of work is this how do i live like this when all of a sudden god always inspires us at the end of the day it is not about me and the people it is about me and god Amen. and until we have that in our minds we shall suffer i'm almost landing false humility sometimes we may look to be humble but we are not humble and sometimes we do not know i may say it is okay it is okay but surely deep in my heart it is not okay i always wish i wish i was recognized i wish i was called i wish i was given this power i wish i was given this authority kuna kitu kanabaki katika roho zetu kama wa Kristo to be recognized to be told oh i admire your faith oh you are great oh you have done great in our church oh we recognize you as the father and the mother of the church we have that desires as human beings it is very important for us to be prayerful so that we can have a clean heart that does not look for compensation that does not look for praise it is this pride that can very easily kill a church it is this pride that has killed families because it causes trouble and conflict when i talk nobody talks and putting even sometimes the pastors can't talk the priests can't talk the church council is so strong and always fighting and then you wonder in this fight where is the spirit of god in each one of us sometimes pride is caused by the blessings that we have received from god by having children i can go hitting my head and saying mumeona watoto wangu mumeona vile niko na watoto watatu mumeona vile niko na watoto wakubwa as i say that i forget there's somebody without my own exits our own money the many clothes that we may have and other great things that we may have been blessed with what is the prescription of pride what is the medicine of pride prescription number 1 jesus christ a total and a deep experience with christ it is not about saying si munyenyeke si kanisa tunyenyeke apana help the church to encounter christ and christ changes their hearts and they humble themselves unless you have christ you can't be humble what for those who don't have christ are always up the campus say hey you look at me but those who are in christ they know how to humble themselves we should never think that we are the best there are others who are better than us and there are others who will come and will be much better than us once in lifetime there was a man called francis of assisi and he said he came up with a a a a a, a prayer a litany of how to be humble and just i will mention four characteristics the night cross if i want to be humble i said prescription number one jesus christ until i know that i am not god there is a god above me and 
there are other people who live with me because there are people who live solo. Ni mimi tu, mimi ni self-contained. I don't need people. I don't need the church. I don't think I need God because I'm becoming bigger than God. And he said, we should not fear to be wronged. We should not fear to be ridiculed. We should not fear to be forgotten because you can be forgotten. We should not fear to suffer. The desire of being loved, we should avoid the desire of being loved. If I'm loved, thank you. If I'm not loved, let me not cry. Let me not take a rope and try to hang myself. We should avoid the desire to be honored. Nimefika hapo na hakuna mtu ameni recognize. We should avoid the desire to be praised. We should avoid the desire to be consulted. Sometimes we shall be consulted. Sometimes we should not. We may not be consulted. And to finish, the best example of humility is Jesus Christ. I look at the life of Jesus Christ from the very beginning to the cross. I only see cross. He suffered. He went through hardships. Even after he did very good things, I was wondering when they were crying, crucify him, crucify him. Where were all those who were healed? Where were all those who were fed? There were 5,000. They could change things. They were not there. When he was taken to the cross, at the foot of the cross, where a few women, he was alone on the cross. And to make the matters worse, stung naked. Sometimes, as men and women of God, we are stripped naked with a word of mouth, with attitudes, with character. It is normal. It is part of us. As Christians, we are ridiculed. One day, I went to Sweden. And people in Sweden are not believers as such. And the person I was going to visit, of course, knew me as a man of God. And he had told a group of people, there is a priest coming. And for them, it sounded like a pet, somebody to be looked at and maybe taken photos, a man of God. And when we, when we landed and I got into their car, I said, before we move, can we pray? And they were saying, <laughs> pray for what? I said, to give God thanks. The journey was safe. He said, come on, that was the pilot. And throughout my stay in Sweden, I was ridiculed every day. Siwombe to kunyamaji, siwombe to tembe, siwombe to lale, ridicule, being laughed at. Until you feel like, really? The only way for us to be humble and to stand by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is to accept humiliations that come into us, not like fools, but trusting in Christ. And we can only withstand them if we go deeper, deeply rooted in the scriptures, the word of God. May the Lord bless you, that you may overcome pride. May the Lord bless you, that you may be able to recognize God and his people. May the Lord bless you so that you may run away from the cancer of sin and pride and be filled with the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Those characteristics are so timely. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, the humble are grateful, they are simple, appreciative, trusting in God, living according to the will of God, so patient and out to please God. Amen. Yeah. I, it was powerful. Let me Amen. just say uh, the word of God came and uh, your servants of God, Major Bunyao, Madam Wake, 
we have Jeremiah and Dosi. Jeremiah and Nonya, when I did a motion, when I like to know my mom. So congratulations, Joshua. Nema si boys nye. Right now. Right now, nema oh. si boys. <laughs> from home and uh, thank you for the good work yes so god bless you all thank you thank you and thank you father yes oh polesana thank you we talked today shortly god bless you thank you may thank the god you, thank give you, you strength from above thank and you all father. the peace that you need at this time of morning god is with you amen 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 amen, amen. Yes, uh, thank you, Felix. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you, everybody, for dialing in. That was So, thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Felix. Thank you, Jeremiah. 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 Thank you, Felix. Thank you, not just preaching, it's in a teaching, being seen so that you combine it. As in a more, so my inky, can you get a little no you wound this yand, could I do common and a more? Goma, we are nee, could I do common and do a lang it in a more summers of God? Let's go and preach about this. Can you get a chairman yan? A bear caught father one and as at the end, it was not me. And the people it was between me and the God. Who paid that to tell you? You get a dinner time, no reflect. Monon, you become a man, you got to be near Monocaca waiting. Caca waiting, Father, tell you. I know, I know. You got waiting, the Gayatu, the Monon. Here now, the Rangaina, you are ready to die to the Apollo. May God bless you so much. My dear Jewish, why can't you greet us and you make the final prayer? If, you, if it's possible, Joyce. My dear Joyce. Pastor. Yes. Yes, Felix. Oh, it's okay. You can. Yes. Welcome. Amen. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much. With a member grouping, Father, I think I go to a tele, to a tele, to a tele, to a tele, and a boy and a fast in me. They do to the woman only with the animal. Amen, amen. Amen. Pastor Jesus, are you able, or my father, Major Gideon, are you able to say how you make the final prayer? Oh, me? Major Gideon, Munyao, if it is possible. Okay, thank you. Natuombe. Ewe mwenesi mungu mbaba wetu. Tasungia mbele sako wakati mwema wakati uwa njioni. Tasema ni asandi kwa njiri ya kutuinulia mtumishu wako, Father Onesimus Modoka. Mbea mengusa rosetu kupitia katika neno lako. Asanti kwa kunena nasi kuhusu unyenyekevu. Maana tumelewa ya kwamba katika hali ya kunjikweza kuna kushushwa. Na wote ambao wananyenyekea mbele sako unawainua. Wote ambao wananyenyekea mbele sako wanapata mbaraka kutoka kwako wale ambao wanajikwesa hawana nafasi ya kukushukuru bali ni wao tu wanajitukusa ndani e Mungu tusaitie 
e Mungu tuhurumie wakati huu ambao ni mungumu wakati huu ambao wengi wanajitukusa ndani yao sisi watumishi wako Mungu tuonekanie asandi kwa kungusa kwa kungusa mioyo yetu jina lako litukuswe sasa baba tunaomba utupe kimbali cha unyenyekevu ili tukaweze kufikia wote ambao baba wa neema wanahitaji na wote ambao baba wa mbinguni wanahitaji kutuona tukiwa watumishi wako wa nyenyekevu ambao tunatengemea neno lako ambao tunaishi kwa ajili ya neno lako asandi baba wetu asandi kwa ibada nzuri asandi kwa kunena nasi asandi kwa mtumishi wako pastor Felix Katambo ambao umemuonekania kwa njia iliyo ya kipekee baba tuwezi kuchukulia jambo hili kuwa ni la kawaida baba umenena nasema jina lako litukuswe iwapo utatupatia nafasi ingine unene nasi ikiwa kanisa ambalo litakuwa chini ya mbingu hatutasahau kusema ni asandi asandi baba wetu tusamee dhambi na makosa yetu ili utukumbali tunaponena neno lako wote ambao wamesikia neno hili kutoka katika sehemu mbalimbali neema yako iwe pamoja nao tupe usingizi wa amani ani katika jina la Yesu Kristo tuomba na kushukuru amen 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 amen, amen. amen. god bless you amen. so much and uh, you enjoy your night very now mwadimu no know? we are humble amen 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 amen, amen. 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 amen.